Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again, and today I want to go ahead and bring you guys the start of my second or third or whatever number it is, Death's Oath character. But this one's going to have a little bit of a twist on it because it's going to be an attack build instead of your standard spellcaster that I'm used to playing. So, to pair along with the Death's Oath, now by the way, this character isn't using Death's Oath yet, which is good, because I'm going to show you how to level it. Uh, we are actually going to use another unique weapon, or another unique, called Edge of Madness. This is actually going to be our main sword uh, that we're going to use throughout the entire game and this character's lifespan, because I kind of wanted to make some things a little bit more unique again and go a little bit budget-friendly. Um, so the core items that we're going to use would be Edge of Madness, uh, Death's Oath, which I don't have at the moment, and then probably scaling, like, <clears throat> via Abyssal stuff, uh, just because getting jewels is an easy way to scale two damage sources. Uh, so if you get like Chaos damage, it would work for your Death's Oath and for your Viper Strike. Same thing with increased damage, damage of killed recently, etc. So just to go over my links currently, we've got Ancestral Call, Melee Physical, Viper Strike, Multi Strike, and Vile Toxins. Now, um, our tree looks kind of something like this. It's going to be pretty tanky. You'll get to like 7 to probably 8k health. Um, you'll also have a ton of armor because currently we're going to use Grace and Determination until we figure out something else to use. Uh, the only reason why I say Grace to Term is you don't have much auras you can run in terms of offensive or chaos things. You do have stuff like Despair, but we're just going to use a Witchfire Brew. <clears throat> Alright, so I want to go ahead and just jump right on into this and show you, but really fast, before I do, I want to let you guys know why I decided to play it as Slayer. Um, so Slayer has something really cool called Impact. And Impact is super solid because it synergizes very well with Ancestral Call. It essentially gives you a melee splash support gem, which works really good with Ancestral Call because you attack and then you splash, you hit, your Ancestral Call mimics that, and AoEs as well. And I do believe this all stacks poisons for you. It also gives increased AoE, which is good for AoE, which is also very good for Death's Oath. Um, going on the left, we have Attack Speed into Bane of Legends, which is Culling Strike and Onslaught. Very good. We have Headsman, which gives us more area damage if you've killed recently. Your Death's Oath is going to constantly be killing targets. This will always be active, except for boss fights. This global damage modifier will scale everything on the character, which is awesome. Um, we also have 15% increased area of effect if you've killed recently, which will be active all the time. That's more area, which is really good. Uh, and then our Uber Lab point is probably going to be Endless Hunger. Of course, you could play around with whatever you'd like. And we also get to make use of this Aura Cluster that I never get to play with on my builds, uh, which is Champion of the Cause, which gives us increased effect of non-curse auras you cast, which means our Grace and Determ will be affected by this, along with the 40% um, the radius that you get. It's actually a ton of radius for auras. The reason why I say that is this over here, Leadership, gives 50%. And this is the second biggest cluster at 40. So let's jump right on in. Uh, where should we go? I'm not really very far here. I'm just going to do a do a northern forest clear to make sure my build is viable for you guys. Uh, there's not really any twink... I mean, I'm using, like, basic gear, I guess, like, gold rim, brisk wrap, some basic gear with, like, not that much flat fizz. You really do want a lot of flat fizz. My jewels aren't even that good, like global critical strike chance from uh, Resolute Technique Kappa. Uh, pretty much just life and resistance. You will struggle with resistance in this build, so that's one thing we're going to have to work towards. But let me just show you. Our illustrious champion returns. Welcome home. So the damage over time from Viper Strike doesn't do too much just yet. You can see it. Oh, that was a Warchief totem, but let's see if I can smack a target for you guys. You can kind of see the damage over time there. Now remember, we're going to have Death's Earth on top of this, which is going to be really good for killing all these white mobs and all this random shit. Uh, and we'll be getting a bit more AoE, and I'll show you on the tree after this run, like this run here. But for leveling, it feels really solid. Uh, we're also rocking 3.6k armor with a Brisk Wrap because of Iron Reflexes and Grace. Uh, this makes your character pretty much immune to physical damage when you're leveling, which is cool. So if you just want to stand still like this in front of Abyssal Monsters... You can. I wouldn't really recommend it, but you can. Uh, which makes it really nice. Now, because we are using Viper Strike, we gain access to this really cool jewel. Uh, this jewel is called Growing Agony, which essentially gives us permanent Unholy Might. Uh, Unholy Might gives us a percentage of our physical, I think it's 30%, added as Chaos Damage.
the build, of course, again, I can't, I can't, uh, stress to say it enough, will become much better once you actually get the Death's Oath on, uh, because it'll make the clear field much better. Okay, so the other AoE that we're gonna get is we still have Headsman to pick up, and I also have Amplify over here for two points. Uh, if you do plan on playing this build, though, I recommend highly for you to get attack speed. Uh, you're gonna want attack speed pretty much as as much as you can get. Since you only have like 1.3 attacks per second on your weapon, and since you're scaling a bit different, you don't really get too much attack speed. Um, or at least, I don't know, I'm trying to get as much attack speed as I can. So thankfully, you get a little bit more attack speed over here. We get 10% from the Ascendancy again, and then on gear, Death's Oath gives like 15%, so that's really good. Uh, Death's Oath also, let me just, do I even have one? I can just log into my other character that died, I think. Let's see, standard, is it in here? There we go. Death's Oath is super good for, like, attack-based builds because it gives <clears throat> 2,000 armor, all res, uh, 50 all, up to 50 all attributes, increase attack speed, life, and leech. So, in terms of actual attack builds, this is an insane chess piece if you can manage to counteract the downside, which for us won't be too much of an issue, uh, just because Azuri's Promise as a unique flask will give us a ton of chaos res, and then just getting, like, 30 to 60 chaos res on our gear, this will could completely void it out. Um... So I'm not really too concerned about that. Also, we will have Uber Lab for Overleech. And since this only lasts three seconds, your Overleech is probably going to last more than three seconds. So they should completely counteract. Anyway, that's pretty much the character. Just wanted to give you guys a little rundown of it. Uh, just to show you guys the <clears throat> Edge of Madness again, because they did change it and I didn't go over it too much. Uh, let's go back to the character here. Edge of Madness was changed, and it now gives flat physical to attacks per level and increased chaos damage per level. Uh, the reason why that's cool is because the increased chaos damage will work for all of the poison and stuff that you do, uh, like Viper Strike, but more importantly, it will scale your Death's Oath by a lot. I mean, if you look at it, Breath of the Council, I don't remember exactly how much um, uh, chaos damage it has on it, but that's typically your best in slot weapon when you play it, and I'm pretty sure this compares to it. Of course, you don't get the shield, but... We're also playing like an attack style character. That's pretty much about it. Uh, I'll give you guys some more updates as we play through the character. My new computer should be built, I mean, hopefully tonight. We're waiting for the graphics card still. Once the card gets in, we're good to go. And uh, I'm excited, dude. I can bring you guys back some like proper quality uh, YouTube content, not 720p. So anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, of course, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.